Was the early United States a caste system? While American independence declared human equality and its separation from the English king, racial slavery created a sort of caste in which the children of enslaved parents were born without freedoms themselves. However, there have always been free blacks as well, and social mobility in some ways was not completely closed, as slaves in some states could achieve freedom, maybe. In the colonial period and throughout history, slavery took many forms and harmed many different groups. To this day, human trafficking meant traps many people from poor countries, sometimes with the promise of helping them cross a national border. Young people, especially women, are sometimes forced into prostitution, even right here in the USA. Slavery was just one of many forms of legally enforced inequality in this country's history. Many different groups, from Native Americans to European minorities, faced laws that denied them basic rights and opportunities well into the last century. Now, in a true caste system, stratification is built into the formal norms of society, often enforced by government. Women are often considered a minority because they were not treated equally under law. Women were treated similarly to the way that young children are treated today. They could not vote, their property belonged to their husbands or fathers, and they had few of the rights as individuals that men enjoyed. Their social roles were limited by law and tradition to old-fashioned gender roles, deviation from which could land them in prison. Legal enforcement of gender roles even decided which personal relationships were acceptable. People whose sexuality does not match the traditional norms of their culture are considered minorities as well. While some would argue that this is not an ascribed status so much as a personal choice of behavior, it's important to ask whether heterosexual individuals, those who are attracted only to people of a different sex, would be able to make the quote-unquote choice to be with someone of the same sex. Most evidence shows that sexual attraction is difficult to change, but because heterosexual relationships are more common, such behavior has become normalized in many cultures. Nevertheless, until 2003, some states enforced laws that made same-sex relationships illegal. 34 years after the major gay rights movement began, after police raided a popular gay club called the Stonewall Inn, only in 2015 did gay couples gain the right to marry across the United States. The feminist movement similarly has fought to gain equal rights for women, but it has taken several major efforts or waves in the last several generations. First wave feminism gained basic legal rights, including the right to own property, be treated as an individual, and have the authority to vote and run for political office. Winning civil rights for racial and ethnic minorities has also happened in stages similar to the feminist waves. The first wave sought many of the same basic legal rights, from the abolition of slavery to integration into major institutions. This fight happened especially slowly, with various groups each making progress towards full legal rights. For most of these groups, there have now been a few generations of relative equality under the law. So where are we in terms of our current dimensions of inequality? Since then, on average, and not counting for differences between specific ethnic groups within these larger racial and ethnic groups, each has become better off economically, rising and falling with the larger economy. But we've seen little difference in the gap between these groups. Average income between groups are the same as they were 40 years ago, and higher incomes over, over time have led to a vast difference in average levels of wealth. Today, an individual woman may have greater wealth than an individual man, but that doesn't mean gender stratification no longer exists. While there is a huge variety of individual wealth, on average, women as a group still earn less for their work. Women working full-time all year are paid about 77 cents for every one dollar paid to full-time working men. In Louisiana, it's closer to 66 cents for every dollar, meaning a difference of many thousands less earned by women each year. We'll come back to why this is in future modules, but first, the USA also lags behind other developed nations in female political leadership. We've not yet had a female president, but it's Congress that makes laws, which affect both men and women. Bureaucratic authority in both houses of the legislature is 80% men, meaning there are four times as many men than women, giving them a major advantage in power. As a mostly capitalist nation dominated by corporations, many important economic decisions are also made by economic leaders, but they are even more dominated by men at 96%. While this may not be complete patriarchy, it does beg the question, does our culture give men traditional authority? 
As women are about half the population, it's easy to see the disparity between genders. But to understand racial and ethnic statistics, we need to compare them to the overall population, with non-Hispanic whites making up about 63% of the United States. Despite increasing minority participation and Obama taking his place as the first African-American president, political power is still disproportionately in the hands of the historically dominant groups. Congress has 80% non-Hispanic white representatives in the House and 94% in the Senate. Corporate power, too, is about 96% controlled at the top. The formal norms that give dominant groups authority and caste systems have been abolished, starting with our Declaration of Independence that withdrew power from the English royal family. Over the next 150 years, the first waves of equality movements got rid of laws that gave different genders and racial groups unequal rights. In principle, the development of a class system should open social mobility, yet we still see a clear stratification with the historically dominant groups on top. Does social mobility have a glass ceiling through which minorities can see through but still face major disadvantages in actually climbing to the top? This is, in part, where prestige comes in. Even without unequal laws, we still may see one another differently. Could an individual's status group stereotypes change the opportunities open to them? In the next lesson, we'll talk about the problems of prejudice and discrimination.